Okay guys, so today we have on Dr. Robert Silverman. He is 2015, he is the 2015 Sports Chiropractor of the Year and he's an awesome sports nutritionist, one of the leaders in the field. Not only that, he's one of the most intelligent human beings that I've had the, uh, the honor of interacting with. Um, he speaks kind of technically sometimes, so any questions that might come up, please post them down below. Uh, as always, with any of the podcast interviews, we put on it, we put it in full length on YouTube, so you guys can view it there for free, or any of the premium members, of course, can view it on my site. Um, in fact, some of the technical things that he does say, because it's so expansive, we're going to break these up into individual episodes. There's just so much to crunch on. I want to be able to let you guys ask questions, break them down into smaller episodes, and we're going to do some, uh, some additional smaller episodes for you guys, all right? So, um, like I said, it's posted in full length. Check it out on YouTube. Make sure you give it a like. It really does help everything out. And guys, uh, please enjoy the next hour of interaction. Hey guys, welcome back to the hour of interaction here. Um, this is a new episode that we've been doing kind of with Wad Doc and where I like to go out and talk to people that I find interesting and like to learn more from. So today we have on 2015 Sports Chiropractor of the Year, Dr. Robert Silverman. He is a chiropractic nutritionist and one of my role models as I was growing up and young in the sports field. Uh, well, young in the chiropractic field before I even kind of really went towards that sports field. And I remember going to different seminars and seeing you pop up, especially, uh, I want to say the ACA was the word I saw you probably the most, but definitely seen you speak several other, uh, several times and mostly was about uh, nutrition. So when we ended up talking a little bit, I wanted to make sure that we got to explore um, stuff about performance and nutrition and and how our nutrition dictates or how it could dictate our performance. Uh, a lot of people have controversial uh, <laughs> viewpoints on this, you know, like when, especially when we're younger and stuff like that. Uh, we seem to think that nutrition means less. As we get older, we seem to think it means more, but I don't know if that's necessarily the case. I'd like to pick your brain about that. But first, uh, could you just uh, say hello to everyone and tell us a little bit about yourself because I never really do a complete job. Uh, you do a great job. Should, you want me to call you Wad Doc or can I call you Dr. Tim? You can call me anything but late for dinner, I guess, right? There you go. Uh, my name's Rob Silverman. I've been a chiropractor for 17 years. And as you know, it's the greatest job in the world because we get to help people. And occasionally somebody says thank you and we get paid. It. I'm basically the kid who had um, a postural structural damage got made fun of a lot. Sports was my way out because I get him on the basketball court and I could do whatever I wanted it would drive him insane. Um, I actually started my life uh, as an, a, a, taking a, a, going to business school and playing basketball. And um, I had an injury and uh, I went to a chiropractor and without question, uh, the Mark Twain quote comes to mind every time. The two most important days in your life, the day you're born and the day you knew why. When he was done with me at 21, I got up and I said, I'm going to be a chiropractor. I'm going to help people like you. And I uh, went straight to chiropractic school right outside of college. Uh, and I've been going for it ever since. And, uh, you know, that chiropractor helped me. He's now a patient of mine. And we, we practice together uh, in the same local area. And we've been good friends. And um, I can tell anybody there's no better job than helping people. And, you know, my mantra is, and I tell everybody, and I'll tell you, what, you know, as we sign off, take care of your body. It's the only place you have to live. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a great thing to live off, too. Um, we tend to become very materialistic, and we think about everything else, take very good care of our, our most prized possessions, but we forget that the most prized possessions should be, should be ourselves, because... You know, it doesn't matter if you have a Lamborghini or a nice mansion. You can always buy another one or uh, get another one, make more money to it for it. But um, we, we can't for ourselves, right? We only get one of these. That's right. You know, uh, it's the only, the only thing you have. And it doesn't matter if you, as you said, if you have 10 cents or $10 million, you know, the only wealth you have is if you have health. Yeah, that and time, right? I mean, time are the, our bodies and time are, are the one thing that we're all given equal parts of. Some some people don't get to you know cherish as much of it, but you know we all have twenty four hours in a day, I guess. And anyway, so um, so Doc, tell us about uh, what you do as far as 
uh, in the nutritional aspect, uh, just in uh, broad strokes a little bit, because I know that you have a book that you talk about. Uh, it's it's called Inside Out. or, or Inside Out, August 15th. August 15th, Inside Out Health. Uh, like I was saying before we got cut off, so if there's a little bit of a skippage, guys, it's because we got cut off. I'm going to try to splice it together best I can, but, you know, whatever. Anyway, uh, Inside Out Health. And like I said, everything that I've initially learned from you was mostly about, you know, uh, nutrient, yeah, nutrition and nutrition based and everything from performance based to musculoskeletal based, uh, you know, like general population to high performance athletes. We all need to ingest something. It's what keeps us going. Uh, tell us about your book and um, what it's all about. Yeah, my book in a nutshell is all about fixing the body from the inside. I think too many people come to us looking for a Band-Aid on a bullet wound. Uh, they talk about pain and they don't understand that pain is a sign that something's wrong in the system. So you and I both, though we go at it just a little differently, don't treat symptoms. We treat systems, whether it's musculoskeletal system, circulatory system, anything of that nature. You're on uh, Snapchat. <laughs> so <laughs> that's great. However, I just totally, I just uh, totally just messed up your whole viewpoint, but keep going. No, no, no. I'm good. I'm, I'm, I, I'm good. I got my mojo real strong today. Uh, so we really more, it's more about the system, not the symptom. And I'll be honest with you, my goal with the book and with any patient that I have, it's all about root cause resolution. So that root cause mes resolution may be about gut health. It may be about movement. It may be about fascia. And you know what, for me, manual therapy and manual rehab, i.e. functional movement, plus mm -hmm. functional nutrition, nutritional biochemistry, will ultimately lead to optimum health and optimum performance. Yeah, uh, like, it, it's, it's funny because it, it comes down as simple as, you know, our body's uh, a factory, right? You know, so why is it that we buy really nice designer jeans or X, Y, Z? Of course, you pay for the name. But the reason why they say they're so good is because they start with the best initial products. Like, you know, like some whatever uh, denim from from like uh, Africa or some some place that's rare. I don't know. Like, where, where do you get like very designer, like thousand, ten thousand count uh, denim? Um, wherever you get that, like the finest silks and whatnot. The point is this. <laughs> You can't be you can't be taking my my uh Dude, the, turnabout is fair play. Uh the point is this is that we're still a factory, right? And if we put shit in, how could we expect to get anything but shit out, right? You can't just take this factory, you can't start with shit raw products and expect to make uh, you know, a Lamborghini. It doesn't happen. Agreed. You know, uh garbage in, garbage out. And that's a that's a problem that I find with a lot of people that they don't understand that the fuel to their health and their performance is what they eat. And the same holds true, especially for an athlete. And what's most interesting, because you're in the CrossFit world, is CrossFit athletes. Because the question is, is a CrossFit athlete endurance? Are they power? This may be the only sport where it's the most mixed thing that you've ever seen. And that's why there's such good athletes going through the CrossFit training. Yeah, energy systems, uh, I, I think, out of all sports, I would say that it definitely has the largest, uh, most dynamic uh, utility of, of all those energy groups, right? You know, um, we do everything. We do absolutely everything. Not all of us do it well, but, but we try, all right? And you uh, saw me work out? <laughs> <laughs> I have. You know what, though, is I still give you uh, a lot of credit. You know, a lot of, a lot of people that are are of your age not saying that you're old but you know like you know middle age master's level master's, master's level like listen you work hard and stuff like that you travel a bunch a lot of times people are like i think i'm just gonna sit and watch uh saturday night live like i don't need to go uh and work out and take care of myself but i think that you know hey you got enough drive enough uh enough passion to take care of your body so however people do it and that's one thing that everybody will always shit on me for they'll be like oh you just like crossfit and that's not true I promote anything that gets you other than being on the couch. Like that is the worst. That is the worst thing I think people could do on on uh, you know a consistent basis. I just activity. Be just be active. I don't care what else you do. So That's right. um, I agree. yeah. I mean, well, thanks. I'm glad that somebody agrees with me. Um, so if if I was gonna come to you and I was gonna and I was interesting in, interested in improving my performance. What's your first steps? What do you do? What do you go about? What do you attack? You know, for me, and, and I'll do it nutritionally, 
I'm clearly going to look at, at blood work. I really want to see where you are. Believe it or not, um, the newest thing and, and probably the most leading edge w thing that we're going to talk about in nutrition is genes. We're going to check. So if someone comes in and they say, my kid is a 15-year-old and he's a, he or she is a superstar athlete. Number one, I'm going to check. Derek Cheater syndrome. They yeah, right, exactly. And of course, the parent never was an athlete, but yeah. that's okay. I'm going to check if they have fast twitch fiber ability. But you want to know the easiest and biggest thing that you can tell all your trainers and docs out there? What's See that? how they move. Mm -hmm. You know, if they don't move well, there's no way they can perform well. So let's look at some of the greats. Bruce Lee, did he move well? Yeah. He looked like a dancer. Yeah. Michael Jordan, how good does he look? Fantastic. Muhammad Ali, how good did he look? Barishnikov. They look great. Yeah. The guy falling in the wide world of sports when he fell down as he skied, how did he look? Pretty bad, like he was going to die. So I'll check movement. That's the quickest, easiest thing to say, whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, look at the women. What's the number one injury they're incurring? ACL injuries. I'll make them do a valgus jump test or an overhead squat. Take a look. If their knee comes in, they're susceptible to ACL injury. They're not going to last there real long. Their muscles aren't firing well. So from a chiropractic personal training perspective, movement, from a nutrition perspective, I'm going to test their blood. And then right after the blood, I'm going to check what they're eating. Okay. So with blood, right? And I like that because not a lot of people do blood exams. There's two things about it. Uh, one, we have, we, we don't know anything about it, right? So my first question then is if I was a person that's looking to do it or not looking to do what you do, but looking to go somebody that does what you do because I don't do any blood exams and I'm very bad at blood myself like as far as uh, the knowledge behind it. It's something I could pick your brain about absolutely. But uh, what am I even looking for? Like what, what? So what blood tests am I getting? And of course, how expensive are they, right? So is it going to cost me 10 grand if I don't have insurance? Because guess what? Crossfitters are, be, besides being awesome people, 99% uh, of them are broke, right? So uh, let's just be realistic. I, we, we all We all, you know, they're, they're just, they're not jobs that carry health insurance, the vast majority of them. And they're not people that are, you know, middle-aged and already have career paths that are, that are done. Right. So they're not people that have, Oh, Hey, I, I got an extra $2,000 to get this blood work done. Um, those, those aren't the, the population that we deal with. You know, it's not the population I'm in. Right. Okay. So here's what I'll do. I'll give you what they should take. If they do have insurance, I'll make it quick. And if they don't, here's a couple of quick things that they can double check. Okay. Number one, if they have insurance, real simple, they should get a full composite, real easy, fasting glucose, hemoglobin A1C, all about the sugar, insulin resistance. If they have, if they have insurance, that'll be covered. If yeah, but that's look, like a $1,500 test. I actually just looked to go get that done, by the way, a full, well, uh, full composite. A full composite. Yeah. yeah. All right. So Real easy stuff. They can go to the drugstore if they want to check their blood sugar before or after a workout. They can prick their own finger, do the hemoglobin A1C or fasting glucose. It's like $4. Okay. They go right to the pharmacy. Yeah. And, th and they can do that. So, so that would be – insurance, you want a full composite. Full composite. And without insurance, you, you want me to go prick my finger in the <laughs> – in the pharmacy. Absolutely. Here's a couple other things. They can take a pH test to see if they're acid or alkaline, which is, is a key component. That's 10 cents. You can get the pH strips right in the pharmacy also. If you're acidic, so you want to be on the test 7 or 7.4. If you're acidic where most people are, you're going to have problems with enzymatic reaction and you're not going to be able to put muscle on as easy. It's 10 cents, my friend. 10 cents for pH? pH. Uh, that would be my big, easy, inexpensive test. It can go get a little pH strip. It's not. It's almost like the litmus test. What do I have to do? Do I have to pee on it? Or do I have, is it blood? No, I like the saliva better than the pee because, you know, some guys just don't know how to do it well and the girls don't care for it. So my personal opinion is stick it in your mouth, you know, roll the saliva for 10 or 15 seconds, put it right up, see where you're at. If you're too acidic, guess what? You're not going to perform as well. You're not going to put muscle on. And guys like my age that are over 40 are definitely going to be lower. And the city leads towards lack of performance. And just think of this. You guys love to be in the lactic acid phase, right? Yeah. Acid, well, you should be in lactic acid phase walking around at 8 o'clock in the morning. You should be in lactic acid phase while you're working out. Right. So it's a great way to determine that you haven't recovered from your workout. I, you know, just talking about this and listening to you, I feel like we can have an entire new episode just on, on being acidic. Because the first question I have is, 
Okay, so what happens if I'm super acidic? Then what the hell do I do then? Real simple. You can change it by diet and just go for your greens, get your green drinks in there, um, limit the amount of coffee that you drink. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, um, eat a better red meat, meaning a little more grass-fed beef. I know you said that money's a little bit of an issue, but stay away from processed foods. So we, what's obviously paleo is enormous in a CrossFit world, paleo terranian, pegan, great, all good. Here's the diet that I tell everybody to adhere to. Jack Lane said it, if man makes it, I won't eat it. Yeah. Simple. Didn't if he it's just got die? a food label on it, forget it. Don't worry about reading a food label, put it down. Did Jack Lane just die? He just died. He was a chiropractor. 1936, University of San Francisco. Wow. Yeah. I, and he made like a whole bunch of uh, different uh, – he was like the – a whole bunch of different exercise devices, right? I think he was like the yeah. one that made like the leg extension machine and they were, they're, he's, you know, the pioneer of, of so much. Universal gyms. He was before Gold's Gym. Yeah. You know, uh, the reruns when I was a kid, he had his own TV show. He used to do push-ups. He used to say body weight was the way to go. Um, he was probably uh, origins in CrossFit, probably are adhering to what Jack Elaine did. He would jump in the water if he had no workout and he'd swim. He'd grab a weight if he could. He'd do push-ups. Yeah, he was a man. Uh, absolutely. So <laughs> uh, let, me, uh, let me just recap for everybody that's there. If, if we were looking at the first thing that we're trying to dive into our nutrition, uh, we definitely don't want to do it just kind of like, oh, hey, I'm just going to look at my nutrition. Uh, but we should actually have some type of objective reasoning behind it, and blood testing is is the way to go with that. If we have if we have insurance, a full composite will tell us a whole bunch. But we'd have to go to a, a physician, right? Um, or you know, a physician that that can help re interpret that. Somebody such as yourself, um, and we would want to have an emphasis on insulin and our sugar levels. Uh, that's the reason why we go to prick our finger in the pharmacy for $4 if we didn't have insurance. Right. Uh, but an even cheaper one than that, if you don't have $4, is uh, $0.10 cents for a pH strip. We probably can't buy singles of them. So Right. Share them amongst your friends, Share them amongst your friends, Not the right? used ones, the unused ones. And the big thing about that is we don't want to be acidic uh, prior to working out, right? We want to be – it's okay for to be acidic during the workouts, like when we get there, right, because we're going to be building lactic acid, but right. um, but definitely not at 8 o'clock in the morning. However, I probably am because I have about seven cups of coffee by then. Uh, well, what am I drinking right now? But I got my organic one here, right? Uh, actually, I, I actually am a little coffee junkie too. I, I drink a lot of, uh, organic, like I do like a lot of like pour over stuff and, uh, you know, like the French press and stuff. Um, yeah. I, I have like my own little grinder. It's kind of weird. Like when I was like 21, 22, I used to go camping and, uh, bring like a, like a case of beer because it was like, it, it was the thing to do then. And now I enjoy going camping and, uh, bringing like, uh, like, you know, my special roast of beans. It's uh, yeah, a little bit different. Yep, yeah, but that's the way to go. If you're gonna drink coffee, it should be organic. All right. Uh, so, um, say we, where do we go from from the time besides nutrition, uh, as far as like besides blood testing, what else is there to do if we're worried about improving our performance? Let's talk about broad steps. Let's talk about. Uh, ingestion of uh, caloric intake, uh, you know, all that type of stuff, uh, macros in general. Here's the thing. I'm not a big paleo guy. I'm not, I, I'm not a big anything guy, to tell you the truth. I'm just like kind of like almost like you said with, with Jack Elaine is like to me it's like I, I like single origin foods, like meaning that if I'm going to eat beef, I'm going to eat beef. If I'm going to eat, uh, you know, whatever, asparagus, I do asparagus. But I, I don't really – I don't do a whole bunch of mixing, so I don't eat a lot of breads because that's multiple ingredients into a, thing, a single food. I don't eat a lot of pastas. Not that I think they're bad, and when I do go out and eat them, I eat them. But what I'm saying is, for the most part, you know, I like a, a normal breakfast for me would be some eggs or some oatmeal, uh, would be you know some bacon or would be some you know uh, whatever in the morning, uh, potatoes. But it's a potato, you know, um, single origin foods. So. That's Way to word it. I love it. What what exactly are do you promote with your athletes as far as where do they start at controlling what their intake is and you know what should they be looking for is like to get on that performance path. 
Well, I'm a big proponent of eating and eating healthy. So I like I like a term single origin food, which I use the term unprocessed, which is really essentially the same word. They are synonymous without question. So yeah. what I like to do with my athletes is I like to explain to them quality macros. They need carbs, they need fats, they need protein. I don't like adhering to a no carbohydrate diet, especially when you're a CrossFitter, because Let's like let's look at Fran. Your Fran time is probably two minutes oh, and low change. Uh, two something. Two something. Two something. Two something. Now my my Fran time is about my five k time. But nevertheless, in a in that short duration of time, you're going to blow through some energy systems. So the initial energy you're going to need is carbohydrates. Yeah. So I'm a big yeah. proponent of getting some good quality carbohydrates in a CrossFitter. They need fat because fat's going to aid in recovery. And clearly protein is going to be a great choice because protein is going to help with muscle hydrophy. So uh, like you said, I like a lot of eggs, you know, egg whites with a, a nice ratio to the yolk. Um, your meats, your quality meats, non-skin meats, your carbohydrates, oatmeal is a great choice. I like more of the ancient grains. Oh, yeah. Uh, I didn't even know what an ancient grain was until about two months ago. True story. Um, oh, well, all right. I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, when the guy's like, oh, these are ancient grains. I was like, yeah, but aren't all grains ancient? Like, you know, like, what the fuck? A plant? I don't know anything about plants. Like, you know? Um, yeah. And he's like, no, no, they're, they're not there. actually. And I, and I felt like the biggest moron but hey sometimes uh sometimes we we just i just miss that ancient grains are a great choice you know the quinoas yeah. of the world your wild rice isn't rice so you can have it it's a seaweed so things of that nature and wild rice so is a many... seaweed yeah wild rice is a seaweed <laughs> Absolutely. You're, you're blowing up my world today dude i make i'm making it happen for you it's all good i want to know i hope people i hope people comment on this i want to know how many people knew that wild rice was a seaweed. I, I bet you I'm not the only one. Well, ask them what quinoa is. It's an ancient grain, but what, what is it really? It's a flower seed. It's a flower seed? It's a flower seed. These are gonna be questions. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna make people answer these questions. What, sure? is, uh, what is quinoa? What is it actually? Uh, and uh, and <laughs> what is wild rice? There you go, let's see what they did. And then, then ask them the question, how can, how can oatmeal be gluten free? How could oatmeal be gluten-free? Right. It's how, easy. Uh, how? Well, I don't know. It's I, it's that thing that they get out in the morning on a farm. You grew up on a farm that picks up the grains. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. Is it a hay thing? Or uh, it turns around like this. Anyway, if they have one that is dedicated to picking up the oatmeal, it's going to be gluten-free because it won't get cross-contamination from the other wheat, whatever that device uh, is. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't know. We don't have one. We have like a baler, a hay baler. So I just go to the, uh, I go in the store, like I was telling you before I go on and they go gluten free, you know? So uh, I just believe everything yeah. that's on packages too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So man, I forgot what the, the question was that I had after that, but here is a question because no doubt that, you know, sooner or later people uh, will, will probably get injuries, uh, whether they're repetitive or traumatic, it doesn't necessarily matter. They still happen. They're inevitable that Somebody will hurt something sometime. Nutrition needs to change then, right? Um, right. We, we go about uh, taking our own precautions or using our own methods to make ourselves feel better. We go to uh, professionals like ourselves. Uh, but we forget that nutrition is also a way of helping heal ourselves. So what, what are the things that we should do? What are the action steps that we should do if we strain or sprain a muscle or, you know, you know, create an injury. How should our nutrition change if we are injured and we're right, aiming, so, aiming to recover from it? Well, let's, let's talk about uh, recovery after a workout. So you're recovered and you're not injured. So I'm a big proponent of consuming food within 30 minutes. There's a great window right after you're done with a CrossFit workout that you want to consume some protein and carbohydrates. Yes. Carbohydrates. So people say, do you believe in high glycemic index carbs, high, in high on uh, blood sugar. Yes, the only time I believe is after a CrossFit workout, you want a high carbohydrate. So I can that, have a bowl of ice cream? Uh, no, there's some fat in there. But so for instance, in your whey protein shake or your pea and rice with your branched chain amino acids added and essential amino acids, you could have a banana. 
Would I wake up in the morning and have a banana if I was just going to walk around? No, because it spiked my glycemic index too high and put me in a fat depositing state. But would I do it after a workout within 30 minutes? And the answer is yes, because that high sugar will shuttle the protein that you're eating with it into the cells quicker. And that's when they're most sensitive and absorbable within a 30 minute window post workout. So that would be one of the things to avoid a workout. Once you're injured, the biggest things are proteins great to help muscles heal. And then I'm a big proponent of a lot of natural herbs, turmeric, turmeric being probably the gold medal winner, um, a lot of greens. And you know, that's when the concept of supplements really come in because once you're injured or if you haven't eaten well, food is not enough to replete depleted or injured cells because if you needed kale and you were depleted, you and I'd be eating kale all day long and we wouldn't be done. So you do need this supplement where it's synthesized, unfortunately, at a very high level to get a specific nutrient in. So we could talk about a few things uh, along those lines if you want to recommend some supplements for CrossFit recovery and injury. We definitely can. Right after you tell me, why do bananas make me feel better and perform better? So there's there's a very – I'm going to tell you a quick story. Um so I did a marathon a couple of years back just to just to do it. I just wanted to see if I could do a marathon. So while I was training for it, um, I, you know, there would be days that you just feel like shit, right? And I would notice that as I, you know, worked through that 18-week that training cycle, I was like, there were certain days that I just felt better, right? And then I realized that every single day I was eating bananas that I felt better, right? So it got to the point like where I was like testing this theory. I would like, I wouldn't eat any bananas at all. And then I would have like two, three, four bananas prior to like these, you know, these three hour runs. And when I say prior, I mean, you know, if I was going running at, at 10 o'clock in the morning, it would be where well, I get up at seven. So I'd have a couple bananas. I like, as soon as I had, uh, got up in the morning and then I'd have like one or two in between that time before I went running. But when I say sustained energy, I don't mean like just like 10 minutes of energy. I mean like I felt better for a two and a half hour, three hour run, um, which doesn't make sense to me because like you said, they're high glycemic index foods. Why do I feel better? Is there something wrong with me? No, I don't think there's anything wrong with you. I just think that maybe you were a little deficient and you needed a little carving up and a banana provided you that. Plus it provided potassium so you had a better muscle contraction. So, uh, no, I mean, you were probably depleted in minerals because you were running and you weren't used to it. And there you go. So, uh, I was on the potassium idea as well. Right. So, because I, I would, I, I eat a lot of bananas during CrossFit competitions as well. It's like my food. It just happens to be what makes me feel the best and I can get it down after I eat. Like I try to always eat after I work out, uh, because you know, I'm trying to get that food in there and sometimes eating is just as hard as the workout, right? Like when you get done and you're trying to get something in, especially if you have three, four workouts throughout that day, throughout that competition, it's sometimes very difficult to get some food down. Um, and bananas are one of those things that seem to make me feel better, uh, allow me to perform, and I also able to get them down. Um, but I, I was just wondering if, if you thought that I was deficient in potassium. But you, never mind. you know, what a great point that we should do one time on a, a podcast. Hmm. because you're right. I mean, I just said one workout, but what do you do if you have three or four or five workouts like the games? How do you get nutrition? How do you regenerate somebody so they can all act like Rich Froning and Mac Frazier? Well, it's super so, tough, right? Because same thing with marathons is you can't, you can't preload enough that you're not in a deficit by the end of the race. It's impossible. And you can't even, you can't even preload enough and then eat enough throughout the race to where because you burn it off, you, you, you burn too much, you, you liquidate too much energy faster than you can actually store it. Like our body's just able to do that. So we're screwed no matter what, I guess. It's, it's tough. And that's why you have to have the right storage and you want to be in optimum health before you go in there. Because, I mean, CrossFit's like uh, doing a marine obstacle course. It just isn't that easy at the CrossFit Games. It's not made for you to com complete. It's made to have you decrease your performance it's it's not yeah. just it's not just one lift yeah they're, like they're, they're 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 very strategic at the way they do it i mean they have this long endurance type race in the very beginning of every crossfit game so like a lot of those guys are down to like 80 80 to 90 percent before the games even start like that we watch like you know the stuff in the stadium uh but 
Um, anyway, I, I digress. Uh, moving forward, uh, let's talk about those nutritional supplements real quick. And then I want to make sure that we hit uh, some detoxing because we all eat like shit no matter what. And, uh, and just final thoughts on gut health for performance. Those are my, my couple things. Sure. So um, my suggestion for nutritional supplements, clearly you're gonna need a post-workout shake. So your options are twofold. You could have a whey protein shake. I'm big on whey protein. I think it's a great choice. However, the new player on the market is pea and rice as long as it's been added um, essential amino acids or branch chain amino acids. Branch chain amino acids are the hero. Leucine, isoleucine, and valine. Leucine is the gold medal winner. What kind of rice did you say? Pea and rice. So it should be split Pea. Ah. Small amount of rice. It's a great combination. If you add the essential amino acids and branch chain amino acids, it's virtually equal to whey in a person that doesn't have any blood sugar issues. If anybody's an athlete with blood sugar re- dysregulation, pea and rice protein with the branch chain amino acids will put on twice as much muscle as whey protein. So you have those options depending on where you are in the spectrum. Great post workout. Uh, things that so you I'm, should take. I'm going to interrupt you again, real quick. Pea and rice oh. is that a form of protein, uh, or is it or is it just like a food? Like you want me to go get a whole bunch of peas and a whole bunch of rice? Well, you're going to have to eat both a lot of both, and you're going to have to cook it. So there are proteins out there, the vegan proteins that mix a yellow split pea with some rice. It's typically a yellow split pea will be about 68 percent of the protein source. Rice will be about 14. This, the pea and the rice taste almost like whey because it's relatively creamy. And then about 18% branch chain amino acids, essential amino acids. You're going to have a nice ratio that's going to rival whey for muscle hydrophy, but be great for anybody that has any blood sugar dysregulation. Almost half of America has a blood sugar problem. If I was making that, if I was just making it and cooking it, um, where what, what would I do? I, I would get... We get yellow peas and what kind of rice? It would be brown rice. Brown rice. Brown rice. I, I've heard I've heard like this new stuff going on about white rice and how uh, if you cold uh, yeah if you cold it if you cool it uh, it becomes a it's starch. Yes, that's it. And it does it doesn't count towards calories and it feeds all your good bacteria in your gut and your microbiome. Re- resistant starches are great. You have to cook it, cool it. And then eat it. So it would be a rice. It would be any kind of potato. But it, we're not it, talking about that one. No, no. We want it to be absorbed. Right. In that so instance. Talking... But resistant starch is great. That could be for another day. Resistant starch feeds your gut. Your gut is the panacea of all your health, which we'll get to or we'll do another time. Yeah. So we're talking brown rice and yellow peas. Pea. So many good topics. Um, I'm going to have to come up with a recipe. <laughs> get it. Recipe. Yeah, there you go. Sometimes my jokes aren't funny, but I laugh at them, so it doesn't matter. They're so, good, man. <laughs> okay, so uh, moving onward uh, with those, right? So we said we had uh, we said that post workout we're gonna do a whey or pea and rice, and yep. what else we got? Um, I'm a big proponent of a good multivitamin, multimineral, phytonutrient because they're gonna enable people to recover. So any kind of multivitamin, phytomulti multi that's of a quality company, what we call a third-party certified company, big takeaway there. Omega-3 fatty acids, what a great choice. Help with anti-inflammation, great for cell membrane health. Uh, we're all made out of cell membranes. Vitamin D, vitamin D or hormone D, as I like to call it. What they've seen with vitamin D is it increases fast twitch fibers which in CrossFit may be very important on some of your Olympic lips or some of your quicker power moves. So vitamin D is a great choice. Probiotics. Probiotics are a critical element. Do me a favor. Be very careful with your probiotics. And once again, make sure that they signify, and I hope I don't lose anybody here. I'm not trying to get too technical, genus, species, and strain. So what do I mean by that? Lactobacillus acidophilus sounds great, but if you tell me Lactobacillus acidophilus NCFM, all these probiotics are strain specific. The strain tells me the property. So for instance, dogs are all from the same species, but if I had a St. Bernard, they're good at carrying the rum. If I had a little poodle, they're more like a little fun at home. Same species, different strain, different property. And of course, finally, everybody should have a fruit and green drink, you know, get your greens up. Great for health. 
keeps you alkaline unless you can eat 19 to 13 fruits and vegetables per day. I don't know that that's viable for most people. You get a nice little green drink for four or five bucks and you save yourself some money and increase performance. Gotcha. Okay, so that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six things. Well, one yep, that's thing, it. One other thing. So we got detox for performance or lasting words on overall gut health. What do you want to chat about? Well, I can tell you this. The gut we could talk about for an hour or two. So basically the gut is a key component to performance and immune function because 70% of our immune cells are in our gut. What have you done for your guts lately? Do you have the guts to be healthy to perform at CrossFit? So that's the question that I'll ask everybody. Not only is the gut known for its immune function, that's where all your macros, obviously your foods and your micro, your vitamins are absorbed. If it's in better health, you're gonna absorb more. So if you're not sure if you have a gut problem, here's the simplest question I ask all my patients. Do you get gas and bloating after eating? If you do, your gut is compromised and the reason it doesn't hurt is there's no pain fibers in your gut. So when you don't take care of your gut or your gut is not optimal, there's been signs and symptoms in the liver, body composition, blood sugar, musculoskeletal health, brain function, and even thyroid. So we shouldn't have gas and bloating. You should not have gas and bloating after you eat. That's a sign that something's wrong with digestion and your gut is compromised. If you know, I lecture like you. Did you ever sit in a room when we lecture and 45 minutes after lunch, you and I feel great? Like, you know, I'm so happy I got to eat. My blood sugar's high. I'm feeling real good and everybody's sleeping and you know we're not boring. You know what that says? That says their gut's on fire. That means their brain's on fire. That says that serotonin in their gut, which is 93% of their gut, just got converted to tryptophan and they're going to sleep. Now so you definitely gut, started confusing people. <laughs> yeah, I did. I'm sorry about that, but I just wanted to know what that was. I always thought it was just because I was boring, but all right. No, so it's everybody. It's everybody's guts. It's it's everybody's guts problem. <laughs> um, yeah. Awesome. Um, so if I if I did, or if I do get a lot of bloating and I do get tired after I eat and all the things that we just said, mm. well then, what what are my? Give me like like one step. Three. No more gluten. Gluten, mean, gluten means glue. It sticks to your intestinal tract. So no more gluten. But you guys should be good with that because paleo has no more gluten. So that's stop, number one. Stop relating me to, to paleo, okay? It hurts my I, feelings. I know, you're, not, you're not comfortable on paleo. Hey, you know, I had the best looking guy in Westchester County just walk in here. I don't know if that sounds good or not. It's my uh, social media guy. So you were wondering how me as an AR, AARP recipient card could know so much. That's because I have the oh millennial. Hey. <laughs> I have the millennial and he teaches See, me everything. What you had to do is you had to find somebody that was 35 years younger than you to be able to teach that's you. Exact, how to turn that's a about what I did. So <laughs> at DR Robert Silverman works, DR Robert Silverman doesn't. Um, no, no, what I would tell him is please do me a favor. Watch what you eat, get gluten out, start taking some probiotics. Those two things will help you greatly. Love it. Drop gluten, start taking probiotics. All right. Very, very cool. Um, okay, so I would love to be able to do this again just because there's some topics that uh, we didn't get to cover and there's some stuff that I'll probably get questions on uh, with uh, after airing this particular episode. I'm also uh, just minorly worried uh it seems to be like with with us cutting out to to make sure everything was recorded if it wasn't that's okay uh we could chat about it uh, like again i mean i'm looking at it it just doesn't i'm looking at the record feed and there's certain places that if they can drop out or could have dropped out right so we'll make sure that if uh if it did that we uh that we get to run it again cool no worries so i want to ask them anything where it's going to run or anything you need to do to post no i follow so okay. I'll see it when it comes out. We'll share it. Um, if you tag Rob, we'll see it. Tag so. me right because I bet on you because everybody else can't fucking tag me. This, guy, this guy's an expert right here. Oh, he'll, he's not only will he, he, superstar. I will. Uh, I'll, you'll be all tagged up. You'll be all tagged up. Don't worry. So, uh, so what I want to do is just thank you one more time for coming on today, and hopefully we do it again soon. Sound cool? Sounds great. Love to see you soon. All right. Talk to you soon. You got it. All right, don't hang up. I will not hang up. I need a, uh, I need a picture. I was trying to take a picture before, but it wasn't working. The Trump move.
Try to make sure that. Did you get his picture? Today. He took a picture of me, so I zapped him back. He's like, whoa. Okay. I'm like looking for. Mm-hmm. Do the truck. There we go. Got it. Good. It's gone in there. I love that you love Trump, huh? Wow. <laughs> we all love Trump here. You know why? Because I got four Latin girls. Up. Say that again. Oh, you made my computer freeze. Wait, you there? You there? I'm calling you right back. 